Uh, so you know, while you were on a lunch break, like I said, I had never tried a servo before, so I tried this. Um, so I went on, uh, <clears throat> I went on Chat GPT, and I first said this. I said, in Microbit version two, I have a servo motor connected to pin zero. So here, I have a servo motor. Uh, I assume you all know this, but if you don't, I'll quickly tell you. So this is a servo motor. It's uh, different from a DC motor because a DC motor can only go clockwise or counterclockwise. But in a servo, we can define what angle we want it to turn to. So it can turn zero to 180 degrees. Uh, there's another servo called continuous servo, which can do 20, 360, but this one can do 180 degrees. And I can tell the servo move only 35 degrees or 50 degrees. Okay. Um, and the difference is that most motors will have two wires. This one has three because one is like voltage, one is ground. And the third is the signal pin and signal pin is what, uh, like I was saying in the first session, signal pin is what we have connected to the micro bit. And that is where we are now connecting this actuator, this component to a to the brains and right now I'm not putting any sensor. I'm using a simple switch. Okay. So I'm saying this is the instruction I gave connect the servo to pin zero and write Python code such that when I press button a, the servo goes to zero degrees. And when I press button B, the servo goes to 180 degrees. Okay. And, um, chat GPT generated this code for me and I did the same thing. I copied the code. I put it there, but okay, I'll do it again. So this is the code. I'm going to copy it here and I'm going to send it to my micro bit. Okay. And now when I'm pressing a B, nothing is working. It's giving me an error and it's saying in line 16, there is some error. Okay. So this is what I was trying to explain earlier that it's, it's telling me that there is a error. Uh, okay. The value should be between zero and one, zero, two, three. So all you have to do is copy this error and go back to chat GPT. And that is what I did here. I just copied the error, whatever the error message it gave. And then it said, I apologize, blah, blah, blah. It gave me new code. So now I just copied this code. I'm going back, deleting this, putting the new code, Sending, sending it. And now if I'm pressing a B, so I press button a, I press button B. Okay. So my point is that sometimes, in fact, many times the first code that chat GPT will generate may not work, especially when you will start writing more complex code, in which case you, you have to keep doing this. You have to keep copying the error messages. And of course, there is a chance that you may not get the right code, but mostly, uh, I think it, you should be able to get the code. So I'm just saying that I think, uh, this is a big thing because, uh, you know, all of this ATL equipment has different, uh, categories. So one is understanding the engineering part of it. So how do motors work and whatever the other is understanding the electronics part of it, which is how the sensors work. And the third is the coding. And I'm saying most people get stuck in coding. So they are always even earlier on, uh, Raji Akka will also remember students were anyway going to Google and cutting, pasting the code. I'm saying now that has become much better because I can ask chat GPT to write specifically the code that I want. And then I agree that knowledge of coding is required because, uh, you know, sometimes it may not be able to solve some very simple error, which if you know coding, then, uh, you know, you, you, uh, you will be able to spot the error. So I'm not saying you should not know coding. I'm saying that, uh, uh understanding coding at a very big level, as in, you know, uh, very good logical thinking, very good computational thinking is becoming more important than in computer language is called syntax. So rather than the syntax, like, have I forgotten to put a colon? If I forget to put a colon, this code will not work. Okay. But that's a very minor error. Uh, so that is what I mean that I think 
Hence, it is very important that we encourage students to use ChatGPT. Okay. Um, so now let's go back to looking at how else can we use ChatGPT. So I'm going to uh, give you this little exercise, and you try it, and then you know come back after ten minutes and share your answers. Okay. So what we have done in the previous session, we looked at uh, data logging, right? So we took a micro bit and we, we said that, you know, all kind of sensor data I can get, and I can then see the visualize the data. Okay. So I can see the graphs and all, and I can also use features on Google sheet and Excel to get the insight. Like I was able to see the average sound and then I can see each value, how far it is from the average. So now my question is, uh, let's say, let's assume that you were uh, working with your students on Manak and you had to come up with new ideas of, you know, innovative ideas for problems. So my question is, can you use uh, your own uh, imagination, your own intelligence? You can also work in groups of two, three people. It's just a quick informal discussion and you can also use chat GPT. But what I want you to do is try to come up with ideas on how can you use this kind of sensor based data for some sort of problem solving, which will be useful in, in innovation challenges like the Manak awards. You understand my question? I'm going to give you 10 minutes or whatever, let's say five, seven minutes to discuss between yourselves, use chat GPT, whatever, and come up with some new ideas on how to use sensor based data for problem solving. Okay. I'm just going to stop and uh, in five, seven minutes, see what you can come up with. So I'm saying let's 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 see how far I mean some more ideas about how to use chat GPT. Okay. So I'm saying you are, let's say, doesn't matter if you are an ATL teacher or you you are also teaching whatever subjects you are teaching. These days content creation is becoming so different. Okay. So for example, let's say you were introducing students to microbit and you are looking for some you know quick ideas or even like completed content. So I'm saying I can go on chat GPT and I can say something like, uh, create five critical thinking questions about, uh, micro bit. So you've got these questions. Okay. Uh, so I'm just, I'm not reading everything, but like how is micro bits block based programming interface, uh, impact the learning experience. Now this is, it, it's a very interesting question that should I teach Python or JavaScript or whatever, or should I teach scratch? Because the, the reasoning here is very different block based programming. We normally start young students with block based programming like scratch is so that we develop their logical thinking skills. And we don't bother so much about the language skills. Like, do you know where to put the semicolon? Okay. So my point is that, um, uh, in my opinion, chat GPT is a great tool for teachers. And also for most of you are very young, uh, you know, people. So you may yourself be preparing for some exam or some, you know, you know, whatever BA, DMED or some qualification. And I'm saying chat GPT is becoming an excellent, uh, personal tutor. Okay. Let's say, let's say I was in Uttar Pradesh and you know, the many students said that they are preparing for civil services. Okay. Uh, so I was demonstrating this. So I'm saying I can go into chat GPT. I'm let's say I'm preparing for the civil services. Okay. I can go to a coaching Institute and pay lakhs of rupees, or I can use technology today to create a learning environment. So I'm saying, let's say, let's say in my civil services exam, I was preparing for history. I, I don't know much about the civil services paper, but I'm just saying I can go into chat GPT and I can say, let's say history. So I'm saying create five critical thinking questions about, uh, 
let's say british raj in india i i don't know what question civil service is asked but what i'm saying is you can do this for anything it's you can ask it for chemistry for uh, you know biology for whatever and you can ask ask it to generate all types of questions now what i was telling the students there is that let's say whatever is the question that chat gpt has come up with so what are the key economic strategies employed by the british colonial administration in india during the british raj whatever okay now i'm saying how do you use it as a personal tutor you use it as a personal tutor because you've got some good questions now you think of the answer or maybe you write down the answer and you can do this for anything i mean i'm saying this could be a history class it could be a geography class or whatever now once you have uh, read the question and you have tried to write the answer yourself then what you can do is copy that question and put it back into chat gpt and now chat gpt will will give you give you answers okay and i'm saying now you can try to compare your answer with the answer chat gpt is giving you okay so this is what i'm saying this is like a personal tutor and the best part is that so it, it's saying something that the answer exploitative economic policies land revenue system whatever now here is the fun part about chat gpt if i ask chat gpt the same question again it will give me a slightly different answer so i'm saying i can get multiple perspectives uh from chat gpt so just think think of, about this right that uh, i am preparing for some exam and either i am spending a lot of money with tuition and you know you know uh, private coaching institutes and all this or i am now using uh, all these technologies this especially this generative ai technologies okay so i'm just going to leave i'm, I'm not going to get any exercise uh, uh, i won't get you to do any exercise here but i'm just giving you ideas that don't uh, like think about chat gpt and all the generative uh, artificial intelligence and where all you can use it okay so uh, there is canva and all which which we will will do tomorrow but i will show you how in in canva especially for teachers i can write some words okay just five words and it will create a whole presentation i did that at uh, sgp last time uh, you know there was a biology teacher and he said mitochondria and i just wrote five words about mitochondria and it created a whole uh, presentation on mitochondria okay so i'm just saying that this is where you know generative ai is going and we will look at uh, at this uh, you know uh, maybe tomorrow uh, so anyway i hope that gives you a flavor of chat gpt i'm going to go back to microbit now okay um so i'm i'm uh, i'm going to go back to microbit and you know you will do this yourself uh it's very simple it's just that there are many steps so just pay attention uh what we are trying to do and we'll do it step by step is that we are going to use the microbit and sensors on the microbit and we can also attach external sensors and we are going to so i could do lots of uh, you know typical electronic stuff that we have done so far but we are going to do something fun we are going to create like a animated story in scratch but it will be interactive and i'm going to show you an example so this is something i'd made some time back and we are going to do it uh, today Let's so i've got this uh, i've got this setup where i have a microbit and i have all these external sensors attached to my microbit so i've got a flame sensor um i've got a smoke sensor and i've got a, a rainwater sensor the one which i just showed you uh, this this sensor which detects like water falling on it okay so i've got these three sensors attached to my microbit and i have written like i've created this small story in scratch where you know there is this giant or whatever but whatever is happening in scratch is being controlled by these sensors okay so i'll just play this video no i prefer night so what happens here is when i shine light on the microbit the background of the scratch changes so it is it is a light background and just see when when the light is off 
it becomes night. So the backdrop of scratch changes based on the light falling on the micro bit. Let there be rain. I love rain. So when the character says, let there be rain, I have put some water, which we are going to do right now. So, uh, you know, this is my sensor and I have this tissue, which is wet. And I, when I put uh, this on, on the sensor, it will say water here and it will say it will start raining uh, in scratch. Drop this rain. This fire to that building. That is not nice. You don't like that? I want laser eyes. Ah, ah, ah. I rule this city. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, this gun come out. So basically, I've got the light sensor. I've got the uh, water sensor, this raindrop sensor. I've got the smoke sensor and I've got the flame sensor. Okay. And I've connected all of those. And when I was saying, uh, you know, uh, when we started the session, I said that don't think of utter tinkering lab as just technology or just, you know, science, you can use it. Uh, so I'm saying uh, this is where I'm trying to bring things together. Uh, I'm saying here is a story but the story is interactive and it is interactive based on these sensors. And then it doesn't, it's your imagination. You can take any sensor and see, you know, what will be the change in that sensor that will drive something in the story. Or I could make some art installation like that. I could have art and uh, things will happen in my painting based on what is happening in the real world. Okay. Uh, so these are the ideas. I'm just going to play this video one more time and then we'll try to make this step by step. Nah, I prefer night. Let there be rain. I love rain. Drop this rain. This fire to that building. That is not nice. You don't like that? I want laser eyes. Ah, ah, ah. I rule this city. Aha. Uh -huh. Let the sun come out. No, nah, I prefer night. Okay. Uh, uh, Okay, um, so we are going to make make uh, this kind of an interactive thing. We'll do it step by step. So uh, what what I'm going to do is I'm going to maybe do two three steps uh, because uh, I think we are going to wind up the session at three forty. So I'll explain like first three four steps, and uh, then you can try it. And maybe tomorrow or um, whatever Nityaka says, uh, we will build on it. Okay, uh, so. First thing you have to understand is, I'm just going to stop share. Um, with micro, we are trying to control scratch with micro bit. Okay. Uh, you've done scratch in code with there. And we are going to use, you know, uh, 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 micro bit to control the sprites. Okay. The problem is that if I, if I start, uh, if I use the usual scratch, um, if I use the usual scratch that you use, I assume you use for code with there. The problem is when I go into extensions and if I add the micro bit extension, the commands that I get are very, very few. I, I don't get any like commands to say what is happening on the pin, what is happening on the sensors. So that is why we are not going to use this scratch version instead we are going to use a different scratch version i'll send you the link so this one is called whatever stretch3.github but anyway i'll send the link the reason we are why we are using 
this particular version of Scratch is that everything else is same as Scratch. But if you go into extensions and then you add this extension called Microbit More, it gives you lots and lots and lots of commands. It tells me every single sensor and lot of other stuff. So that is the reason why we are using this version of Scratch so that we get lot of control over uh, our uh, uh, over Microbit. Okay, so my setup is 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 the same. I've got my uh, do not use any sensor. We'll start st step by step. So I just got my my Microbit connected to my laptop. Okay. But what we are going to do is we are going to not, uh, we want a live connection between our micro bit and our scratch. And for a live connection between the two, we are going to use Bluetooth. So we will basically connect our web browser with micro bit using Bluetooth. And that is why you will have to do this project either in Chrome or in Edge browser. It will not work on other browsers because that Bluetooth feature is not available. Okay. Now it's very, very simple. It's just that there are some steps which you will have to follow. Otherwise it will not work. So this uh, extension is called Microbit More. So if I go and I just search for Microbit More extension, this is by some, I think some Japanese person. Uh, so in this micro bit more uh, he i don't know he or she has explained it step by step on how we are going to uh, how what you need to do to make this work okay so the first thing that you have to do is you have to go here micro bit program and this will download a hex file okay uh, so microbit, uh, uh, the make code files uh, that, that are created for microbit are called uh, hex files. So, so it will download a hex file. Okay, so I've got this hex file downloaded here now. And what you have to do is with your microbit connected, you go to microbit. So it is connected to my, uh, my, uh, my laptop. So I can see it, it's just like connecting a USB external USB device. Okay. And I am going to just copy this file onto my micro bit. So the first step is that you have to go to micro bit more. And even if you use micro bit on the regular scratch version, you have to do this because this is the hex file, which will, uh, uh, it's the basically the Bluetooth uh, file. This is the file which will allow me to connect uh, my, my micro bit with my laptop. Then once you have put this hex file, the second thing is you need something called a software called scratch link. So I have got a Mac, so I'm using scratch link for Mac, but you can use scratch link for windows if you have a windows machine. Okay. So when you will click another file will download. This is a zip file and this is like any, you know, any windows program that you install. So now I can't install this because, you know, so I'm saying if I unzip this file, you will have, you know, you, you will have your, uh, uh, whatever this file and you will just click and just install the software. Okay. So I'm just repeating it on Google. If you just search micro bit more extension, that is step one and you go to the micro bit more website. I don't know why this one is, uh, okay. Um, sure. Okay. One second, I've got this, you know, this something here with window is not closing. Just one second. Okay. Uh, so I'm, I'm on this micro bit more website and right from here, if you will say open editor, if you'll click here, the editor will open. Okay. Uh, which is, which is the specific extension of micro bit that we want to use. 
But before you do that, first step you have to do is click on this microbit program button. One hex file will download and that hex file you have to put on your microbit. Then the second thing you have to do is click on this scratch link for windows. Another file will download and you will uh, install scratch link. And once you have scratch link installed, I'm just going to, you know, it's just like running some software in the background. So I'm going to say run scratch link. So when I run scratch link top of my screen, if you can see this is scratch link. So I've got scratch link running in the background on my machine. I have installed this hex file and I have put this hex file on my micro bit. And now I'm just going to the editor. So this is the special version of scratch. Okay. So, um, so sometimes this, this problem happens. Okay. If you see on micro bit, it's giving a sad face. Okay. And after the sad face it's giving some numbers. Okay. Five, zero, three. So when, when your micro bit does this, this, what you can do is, I mean, this is, this is called an error code. I don't know why this has happened, but I'm just showing you because it has happened. I'm explaining sometimes it happens. So this is an error code called five zero three. So you can go on the browser and say micro bit error five zero three, and then it will tell you what are, what is this error? Okay. So then go down and it has all these numbers and you have to see which one is five zero three. Okay. Five zero two. Oh, it doesn't have a five zero three. Uh, okay. So, uh, so I'm not very sure what has happened to my micro bit. Uh, let me just see. Just give me a minute. Okay. Um, so I, I had another micro bit, um, uh, uh uh, on which I did that done this yeah, last uh, last night. So I'm going to use this micro bit. I'll figure out what the error message I'm getting. I'll tell you later. So so I'm saying just to uh, repeat my steps. You you are uh, going to micro bit extension. Okay, micro bit extension. You are going to download the hex file. You are going to install Scratch. You are going to have the Scratch running in the background. Okay. Now when you will download this hex file on your micro bit. Okay. Uh, you will get a message here, which will say, fill all the 25 LEDs. And what you have to do is you have to keep tilting the LED, uh, the micro bit in all directions till all the 25 LEDs light up. If you have ever used compass feature of micro bit, you have to do the same thing. It's just one time you have to do it, but Basically the moment you will put the hex file into the micro bit, it will give you a message here and it will say, just keep twisting it till all the 25 LEDs are on. Once the 25 LEDs are on, then we are good to go. Okay. So now I have a, a micro bit where I have installed the hex file. I have tilted it all around so that all 25 LEDs lit up and I got a, a okay message and I have scratch running in the background. Now, if I'm going to this special extension and I'm saying micro bit, I can see that my micro bit is connected. Okay. When you do it yourself, if you have problems, you can ask me and we can, we can see, but it will be one of these things. I'm saying this because in Tutti Corin, they, they were trying to do something with this extension last year and they couldn't make it work. And I think they couldn't make it work because of one of these problems. Like. It's very simple, but it, you have to follow the steps. Okay. So now once your micro bit is connected and this, you will get this, you know, green tick box here, which means my browser and my micro bit are now connected via Bluetooth. Okay. So now I can, I can, you know, do, uh, interesting things. So now assuming that, uh, you know, you know, some basic programming, I'm saying, I am just getting this button, which is saying when button A is pressed. And what we are trying to do right now is we want to move this sprite left and right by pressing the A and B button on our micro bit. Okay. So all I'm saying is, I mean, I hope you've done, you know, I, I think in your 
code vidya you have one program where you have to catch the apples falling so you must have done something like this uh, in that for that program so i'm just going to go here and i'm going to say when green flag is clicked in control i'm saying forever and i want to check a condition i'm going to go and get a if block and i'm saying if my button a is pressed then move 10 steps okay uh let me show you both my screen and okay so now i uh, you know i hope you can see both uh let me make this a bit better okay so i've got my micro bit here i have a simple command which says when i press button a my sprite will move okay now of course it's moving in the i want it to move to the left so i'm just going to say minus 10 okay and now when i press a button my sprite is moving to the left okay then i'm just i just want to make sure you can see this then i'm saying i'm going to just duplicate this put it here and say when button b is pressed move to the other side okay so now when i am pressing a a button is moving here b button is moving here so now i am controlling the sprite with the micro bit okay so i'm going to stop here because i've given you lot of instructions uh please try yourself uh and if you get stuck then you know let me know